Hello Weekend Crafter! Welcome or welcome back to the Craft Time Studio. I'm Ange and I make clay crafts every weekend. If you're new here, I hope you consider liking and subscribing for your weekend dose of crafts. I often get asked what I do with my slabs and so for this project, apart from showing you how I make my slabs, I will also share with you my current obsession, which is upcycling my glass bottles. I have a lot of these slim bottles from supplements that I drink, and I thought that I would turn them into alcohol sprays. But before we proceed, remember to clean your workspace first. I use a glass mat in all my projects, so I clean it with a bit of alcohol and wipe it down. To make my main slab, I mix two parts Sculpey Primo Ultramarine Blue with one part Sculpey Primo Graphite Pearl. I ran it through my pasta roller until the colors were fully incorporated. After blending everything, you should get something of a pearly navy blue color. Then, I rolled it out into the number 6 setting, which is a pretty thin setting on my pasta machine. Measure the bottle against the slab because we want the slab to fully cover the bottle. Cut off the excess clay to get this rectangular shape using your tissue blade. Now that you have your slab, it's time to put on our elements. First is the texture. I used a medium grit sandpaper and a manual ruler to go and texture the whole slab. Next, let's bring out my color palette. I'm using some colors that will hopefully stand out against the darkness of my blue slab. I'm also using some pre-made canes which I bought from this talented cane maker. i link her IG in the description below in case you want to check her out. I'll also be using some daisy cutters that I got from createalong.com, some oval and circular cutters, as well as some silicone molds of flowers. You will also need a tissue blade and a detail needle. Let's start with the droopy daisies first. To make these daisies, you will need some white clay. Roll them out into the number 7 setting. Then, punch the daisies using the cutter. Since I want them to droop down, I use an oblong cutter to cut the top two petals. Now that I am left with three petals, I get my tissue blade and make small slices in between the petals to make it easier to bend down. I gently massage the petals downward. A reminder when you're laying out your flowers, don't place anything on the sides yet. We will add the design to the side towards the end. Once you've placed the flowers, it's time to come in with a detail needle and put some texture on the petals. Do the same to the remaining petals. Next, we will place the center. I have this handy cutter that has two sizes of circles. We will use the bigger circle to punch the center for the bigger daisy and the smaller circle to punch the shape on the smaller daisy. 
Next, carefully place them atop each flower. And then, roll out some snakes for your stems. I will repeat this pattern except this time, I will attach them to the top right corner of my slab. That's another thing that I do when I make big slabs like this. I like to start at the corners first and then work my way towards the center. As we do the droopy daisies on the other side, I just want to make a quick check up on you guys. I hope that you had a restful holiday. I myself took a short break just to spend a little time with family. I know that the past few years and months have been very stressful for a variety of reasons. And for whatever it's worth, I hope that crafting has given you a happy place that you can go to to make your day a little brighter. I know that personally, I can't imagine surviving this without a little bit of creative release. And if I haven't said it yet, I also want to give a thank you for coming back each weekend to check up on my latest project. It really means a lot to have someone feedback and tell me that they enjoy seeing my slabs. Okay, let's go back to the project. Next, bring out the floral silicone molds. I love working with my silicone molds because it's an easy way of giving dimension to my slab. I have made a couple of tutorials using silicone molds and I will link you to one in case you want to learn how to make clean flower shapes. I pack my mold in with some yellow clay and then I slice the excess clay with my tissue blade. Then, I bring out my metal ball stylus to make an indent at the center. I then go back with my detail needle to bring the details that might have gotten smushed. I get some orange clay and roll them into small balls. Then I place a ball on each indent and press it down with my finger lightly. Finally, I add some texture with my detail needle. 
I also use my pre-made canes to fill out the space some more. I roll out some thin stems and top them with the pre-made petals. I slice the canes very thinly because the rest of my flowers are also pretty thin. At this point, I go in between my flowers to make sure that there are no huge gaps. I use the circular petal but you can also just roll a few balls of clay and go in between the spaces. I continue filling my space out with a mix of flowers from my silicone molds and the pre-made canes until I'm happy with the amount of detail on my slab. For the final touch, I add my leaves. An easy way of making leaves is just rolling out a log and pinching both ends. Then you've got yourself a leaf kin.
Another way is just by punching out small circles and then pinching one end of the circle. I'm sorry for this long video. I've tried to compress it as much as I could without losing the important details of the tutorial, but I can only do so much. This is a pretty big slab and if it isn't sped up, it would take me about 3 hours to make in real life. Just speed it up if you feel that it's too long. I just didn't want to make it so fast that you would miss out on how it was done. Thanks for your patience! Now that the slab is filled, it's time to place it on the bottle. Carefully loosen the slab from the glass mat by running a long tissue blade through it. Now place it carefully on the clean glass bottle, making sure that the ends meet. If 
If there is excess clay, use your blade to slice the clay off. If there is, however, a small gap, adjust the slab by lifting it a little and gently pulling. When the ends have met, get your sandpaper and gently pat on the seams so that it won't be noticeable. Sometimes I also use the metal ball stylus to massage the seams together and then go back again with some sandpaper. For the final touch, I add more petals and flowers to hide the seam. This is why I don't fill the sides of the slab until I've reached the end, which is when I attach it to the bottle. And then, because I don't want any of the petals detaching from the bottle, I just pat the whole thing down lightly with the sandpaper. For the final touch, I pierce small holes on the slab to release any air that might have been trapped when I place it on the glass bottle. This then goes to the oven for baking. As my oven toaster is small, I had to put it on its side. After baking, I spread a thin layer of sculpy satin glaze. Then I attached the atomizer that I ordered online to transform these bottles into spray bottles for alcohol. Or if you're a plant lover, you can fill it with water to spray your plants as well. As not only was I able to find a use for my big slabs, I was also able to upcycle these bottles. I hope that you enjoyed watching me make this. If you haven't yet, do consider liking and subscribing to the Craft Time Studio. Have a crafty weekend! Bye!